Hello. In this video, we're going to build a decision tree model that will predict which customers are more likely to churn than others using a telco data set that provides information about customer behavior. Uh, we also have which customers have churned in the past, and that's what we'll be using to build our decision tree on. So to get started, my data is in an Excel file, so I'm going to grab a read Excel operator and then come over to the import configuration wizard and my data is in my data set folder telco data here hit next then select the tab that you want in this case it's on telco churn sample next again uh, rapid miner guides you through pulling in data from these sources in this case my customer ID is really my ID field so I want to set that to an ID my area code, even though it's an integer, is really a nominal. And over here at the end, I have both the churn bit as a 0, 1, and I have a churn flag. Uh, the decision tree, I want it to output customers that have churned as a binomial. So first I'm going to set it to a label, and then I'm going to let it know that I only have yes, no in there. The label is what indicates to Rapid Miner that I want it to decide and predict which customers are likely to churn. So a no means they haven't churned, a Y means they have churned. And then I'm going to hit finish. And I can connect my operator to my output, run this file. And you can see I have 3,000 rows. My churn flag has been identified. I can look at the statistics and understand my data and go through. Uh, min max values, what's available, all the fields that I have. Next, I am going to select the attributes that I want to use in my model. Um, in this case, I'm going to select a subset of data and the churn flag, of course, I want that. And then I want these usage minutes. So I've got day usage, evening usage, night usage, my international minutes that I have, uh, as well as the tenure in days, uh, the term in years of their contract, and if they have voicemail messages. And I'm going to hit apply. And since I pulled that into the middle of the stream, you can see that it um, is connected already. So then I'm just going to hit run. And you can see those are the outputs of what I have. I have the example set is only those fields that I've selected. Next, I'm going to grab my decision tree, drag that operator over, and you see where it turns to kind of a darker color, it means it's going to drop the operator in, and then I can pull my model out as well. This will give me the output of the model, this will give me the example output, and I run the model. In this case, you can see again my 3000 examples and the decision tree gets created. Walking through the tree, uh, customers that use a lot of daytime minutes over 316 are very likely to leave. In this case, there were 18, they all left. Uh, if you use less than 316 minutes and less than 284 minutes, then your likelihood to leave is much less. So that is how the decision tree works. I can come into my description and I actually follow the path here uh, to what the output is. It gives me the min max. And then just to add a little more complexity to it, we're going to go back to the attributes and add in the number of customer service calls. So this is the number of times our customers have called into the call center for some type of help. So when I add that, run the model again, and you'll see we have a much more complex decision tree that is using that customer service calls to indicate which branch of the tree to go down. So that is the basics of how a decision tree works and how you can wire up the data that you have from Excel into a decision tree and get an understanding of what your data may be able to provide you. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to call us. Thank you.